Inter and Roma playing out a goalless draw to the surprise of many at the San Siro. It keeps Inter top by two points, but of course Juventus had the game in hand. That point enough to move Roma into the top four for now. Uh, Gap, your big takeaway. I don't think many would have predicted a goalless draw ahead of this one. And I, th I think it's the first time Inter have failed to score under uh, Antonio Conte, isn't it? Uh, yeah, uh, that's yeah, true. It's... It is the first time this season. And when you look at uh, both teams depleted, obviously, uh, with injuries, Inter mostly in, in, in midfield. Uh, Roma definitely up top, having to play Zagnolo there. Uh, between the sticks, I thought Mirante was was outstanding. Um, Inter created many more chances. I didn't think the, the strikers, especially Lautaro, had the best game. But um, I thought they certainly did more to, to, to go and win it. Roma, understandably, away from home, they defended very, very well. Um, I think this is the kind of match where, you know, a goal earlier might have changed the game. As it happened, we saw one team huffing and puffing and creating a host of mostly half chances, perhaps, running into some uh, a goalkeeper who had an outstanding night, and uh, that was that. Yeah, he was really the story, wasn't he? Antonio Mirante, backup goalkeeper, 36-year-old goalkeeper for Roma, who had a, an adventurous night, Gab. Uh, no question about it. I mean, uh, you know, you look at it, uh, it, especially in the first half, he, he, made, some, he made some huge saves. Um, but I thought Roma collectively, Mancini and uh, especially, but also Chris Smalling, you know, I thought they did what they they did what they were set out to do. They they really disrupted uh, that that Lukaku Lautaro Martinez partnership. I think Inter certainly weren't helped in midfield by the fact that you know Borja can contribute for 45 minutes, but probably not much longer than that. They really missed uh, the energy and the quality that, that people like uh, uh, Barella and Sensi uh, give you. And you know, as the game wore on, they were unable to, uh, to really unable to unlock chances. Uh, against this the, this Roma team, mm. they better hope they take the chances in midweek. Well, I was going to say, did they, they got a they got a big one coming up against Barcelona. Uh, you think they had an impact tonight? Did they have one eye on no, that Barcelona? No, game? no, I don't think so. As Gab no. mentioned, there was there was changes. The goalkeeper, particularly in the second half, made a couple of great saves. Mm. One one down low uh, to his left hand side did brilliant to get down there. And as you said at the top, and rightly so, I was looking at it before we started, thinking they've scored in every game. Yeah. Even in defeat, which hasn't been often, or if they've drawn and dropped some points, they've scored. So you can't... It's hard to criticise them for what they've achieved so far, bearing in mind this is Conte's first season and there was some new signings. And, you know, Roma have started to get a little bit better as the season's gone on. So it, it wasn't an ideal result for them. Obviously, Juve can jump above mm. them now. But I don't think the Champions League game had any bearing on this. That's another game mm. for, for midweek. Maybe Antonio yeah. Conte will start moaning about squad yeah. size again. Who knows? But with Dortmund breathing on level points with them, breathing down the neck, they're probably going to have to beat Barcelona. Whether it's a Barcelona B or not, I don't know what Valverde's going to do, but they're going to have to play a little bit better to win the three points. So, Gab, now sitting here in early December, how do you currently assess their title credentials? I mean, look, they've started the season about as well as you can start the season domestically. Uh, Juventus themselves, yeah, you know, they can go top, but guess what? They could also lose. They're playing, you know, they're playing a, a very good uh, Lazio side that, that's been scor scoring freely of late. Uh, Diego Godin spoke immediately after the game and said, you know, he wasn't disappointed. He said it would have been nice to win, but uh, we created loads of chances. We didn't concede many chances, and things simply didn't work out for us on the night, onwards and upwards. And and I think that's probably the right spirit and, and the right attitude um, to to have going into. Obviously, this huge game uh, against Barcelona, but also the the head-to-head -head against Juventus. That's likely uh, it's likely going to go on for a while. Like at some point, the rest of Serie A was going to was going to catch up. Whether it's Lazio, whether it's Roma, whether it's uh, Atalanta, maybe even Napoli. Juventus and Inter are very good teams by Serie A standards, but you know there isn't this enormous gulf between them and and everybody else. So a draw at home with Roma. I don't think is a terrible result at this stage of the season. So, so now, Gab, it's back in Juventus's court. They have the game tomorrow, the big one in Rome against Lazio. Uh, how big a task is this, do you think, uh, for Juventus tomorrow? 
I think it's tough because, you know, as we've seen in, in, in recent games, obviously they're coming off uh, uh, the defeat last weekend against Oswaldo. Oh, sorry, the, the draw, which felt like a defeat because uh, it was at home uh, in some ways uh, against Oswaldo. But it's important to know, Juventus are still the only undefeated team in all competitions uh, in the Big Five. And I think that's, uh, that's an important number which, or an important stat that we often forget about. I think the concern is Juventus haven't played well in a while and uh, they've, they've relied on individuals, whether Dybala, whether Higuain, people popping up at the right time. Weirdly, they actually probably played better against uh, Sassuolo than they had in, in some of the previous games. Mm. Uh, I think they need, at some point, a quality team performance. Obviously, Cristiano Ronaldo's been uh, in the spotlight. I think this would be a good game uh, for him to regain his mojo in, um, especially because, of course, they've already secured first place in the Champions League. and wouldn't be surprised if if Saturday gives everybody a rest in, uh, in midweek. Mm. Well, that's Saturday fixed in. Yes. 12.30 <laughs> Manchester Derby, a few games before then, the big one. It's, it all uh, leads into... Lazio uh, versus Juventus. We know Juventus have got the biggest squad gap in the, uh, in the division, and maybe that's part of Sarri's problem, trying to find the balance. Mm -hmm. But I'm inter One of the things I'm interested in, we've talked on this show about Antonio Conte, how he's moaned about the squad and that. What is the chances of Inter spending some money in January and maybe one or two areas that he wants to improve. And do you think they need to do that to go all the way through to May to challenge? Mm. I think there's no question that Conte will, will ask for more players. Uh, I, I think that's patently obvious. Um, by the same token, though, I think he's often moaned because, you know, the players were out or players were injured. But the reality is, and I know there's that word you don't like, but um, <laughs> financial fair play. Inter are pretty much stressed. You know, they were hoping to get money back for Icardi, Nangolan, and, uh, and Perisic in the summer. Uh, they may yet get money back next year, but for the time being, that money didn't come in. So they have to be very, very mindful of that. I think what they're going to be hoping for is say, look, by the time January rolls about, rolls around, Barella and Sensi will be back. You know, there'll be like new signings, as, as people say. And, you know, maybe they can get somebody in on loan, maybe an extra body. I think they also want to really assess Alexis Sanchez because I think that's been another factor people haven't really talked about. Lautaro and uh, Lukaku have played virtually all the time, but, you know, you need another another striker in there to, to, to give them uh, a rest or, or to challenge them or if they have a loss of form. So um, I think Conte will probably be pushing for that uh, and, and maybe a midfielder as well. I don't think at this time, uh, unless they manage to sell somebody, I don't think they're going to get uh, uh, both. But then again, who knows? Maybe they can go and sell Gabby Gall since he scored, what, like 150 goals in uh, <laughs> uh, a, a, a Flamengo. Maybe he gets crowned world champion and all of a sudden he gets a 60 million offer from China and boom, Bob's your uncle. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.